So I'm going to call tonight's select board meeting to order. Um, and uh, I would ask our guests to introduce themselves, please. Go ahead. Thanks, George. Budget Committee and Conservation Commission. Okay. Mark Harris, Budget Committee. Thanks, Mark. Zara Vincent, Budget Committee. Hi, thank you, Zara. Samantha Bogan. Yeah. Steve Dennis. Yeah. Shelly Deshern. Hi, Shelly. Wearing a very. You okay? Oh, surgery. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> very exciting Halloween costume. I, I know, I should have had it the day before. Let's get the kids. Welcome. Um, we need to approve the minutes of the October 17th regular select board meeting. Yeah, do it. I'd like to make the motion. Oh, go ahead, sir. Don't you don't have a quorum. We don't have Liz. We need Randy wasn't here. Liz would need to be here. Bridget was not here, so we don't have enough. Okay, so well, pass over. Pass over that one. Thank you. Um, reviewing, amending, and approving the agenda for uh, November 7th tonight meeting. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Additions or amendments? Sarah? Yes. Okay. Is there a need for communications? Didn't we have some communications come in about Mead Road? Did that already get addressed? I, I, I don't know. I thought we had a an email come in. We did. We did. Oh, we did? Okay. Are you going to discuss that under? I would like to. Road <laughs> report. Sure. Okay. Under the highway report? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I sent you guys the speed study that had been done. I'm sorry? I said I sent you guys the speed study. Yes. Sure. Very exciting. I haven't had a chance to. I didn't even see it. Oh, well, it's, I'll send it to you. It's, just, it's not in here. You it's can give us a little. I, I quickly uh, I quickly looked at it. What I concluded is what we already know, which is people are speeding. 50% are not, 50% are, roughly. Anyway. Um, any other amendments to the agenda? A motion to approve. I make the motion that we approve the uh, agenda of November 7th as amended. Okay. Thank you, Victor. Randy seconds. All in favor? Aye. All right, thank you. Any opposed? We've approved the agenda. Thank you. Um, our first item on our agenda is meeting with Reuben, but I do not see him. Is he in the waiting room? Okay. Can we backtrack? Do a backtrack. He's right on time, five minutes after. Hi, Reuben. Good evening. Hi, all. There you go. You can hear us. We can hear you. Thank you. Sound check works. Good. <laughs> um, so the uh, actual intended subject of the discussion for this evening was uh, to have you go through this uh, proposal for uh, changing our email system. Uh, but you also sent us a... Uh, a server proposal and a battery backup proposal. So why don't we do quickly do the, uh, or quickly, reasonably quickly, uh, do the uh, email proposal first. I think, okay. I think just, to, just to summarize the reason for asking to meet with you, um, I, guess I, would, I guess I would say we were surprised at the price and largely that may be because we don't understand what's involved but we feel like we need to understand more that's fair um i am just bringing this up so that it's in front of me task switching from the last client meeting that i was just wrapping up so i apologize i'm a little uh a little behind here um so i'm the short version is that an email migration means that we have to go through every mailbox um, and find all of the data for all of the folks and um, and uh, pull it across into the new system. 
um, the system that you're currently using is not one that we can use our automated tools on. Um, so for some mail systems, we have automated tools that we can sort of feed a whole bunch of credentials to, um, and it'll walk down for us and grab all of the mailboxes, log in as the users sort of use delegated access, access um, to pull the data across. And so the amount of labor that we have to do is, is substantially less. We basically have to sort of spot check and make sure that the messages appear to be there and that you know we review any error logs and that kind of stuff. Um, this, from my understanding, is a much more manual process. Um, so that means that we have to gather credentials. We have to go um, basically log in as each user and pull the mail across into the new system. So it's just, it's a much more labor intensive process. But you're not you're not reviewing every email. You're just going oh, into each mailbox and, no. <laughs> and pulling the data across. No, and we're definitely not. And we have no interest in reviewing every you you don't. Yeah, oh, I don't know. No, I, uh, I get that. But but what we are doing is like checking the counts, right? So if we log into the account and it says there's twenty two thousand emails in this account, and we drag it across we have to make sure that there's like roughly the same number of um of emails and we have to do that at least on a spot check basis for each folder um so you're going to have emails that are in different folders and all of that so it's um it, so no we're definitely not looking at each individual email that would be a fool's errand um but um, but instead of just unleashing our automated tool that logs in as each user and copies the messages one for one across and does that automatically, um, we're actually having to configure an email client as the user and move the messages across that way. It's like I said, it's a, just a much more manual process. And that is, Primarily, item number two on the proposal, 36 hours? Or is that the whole amount of labor? No, it isn't. I'm looking where it says service TNM phase two migration. Sorry, I'm still clicking around and I'm okay. almost okay. into the quote. <laughs> The other piece that um, is um, is included in this, in, in the labor side of things, um, sorry, I finally have the quote up in front of me, um, is uh, the deployment of spam filtering and uh, email archiving. So one of the things that, um, that we wanted to make sure of is that this system is compliant with um, open meeting laws and all of that. Um, and so we included um, the uh, email spam filtering and auto archiving um, so that there's a permanent record of all of the emails that pass through the system. And that, um, that setup is another um, fair hunk of work to, to get the integration with that system and the Office 365 tenant set up. And that's a one time um, as a lot of these sort of migration jobs are, um, it's, it's a one-time expense that it takes to sort of get that integration all turned up and the accounts um, configured and synchronized across and all of that. Um, but again, it's, it's a fairly substantial amount of work to um, go through and get all of that done. And I am correct 
that basically we have to keep these emails forever, forever, right? I mean, there's no, we can't. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Am I muted somehow? Uh, it looks like you're muted. Looks like the whole room is muted. Help, Sarah. I know, I know. Okay, all right. <laughs> I don't know. Hold on. She's having a uh, technical difficulty. Okay, I can't hear you. Yeah, she's working on it. I can't hear you. Time right. out. <laughs> all right, something happened, ladies and gentlemen. I got bounced out of this. Throw something in the chat there. <clears throat> I don't know. Can just you? Just unmute it. Oh, wait. Here it is. Wait a minute. Completely bounced me out. There you go. Can you there hear us are. now? Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I probably was talking while you guys were talking, and I had no idea, so I apologize. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So my, so my question was, I believe I'm right that we have to keep all these emails forever, correct? Uh, I mean, we can't say we're going to delete all the emails from public. prior to three years ago or something like that. We need to keep them. Correct. Either that or the only other way to go would be to keep hard copies of them or who knows what, some horrible. The, uh, so this gets into a whole conversation around what's discoverable and what's not and, you know, sort right. of what folks decide to do. And that's quite external to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to what we do. Um, but you know, the I'm, email I'm, archiving yeah, service sort of, of checks that box of the for you. Here is we've got a whole body of really old emails that we're dealing with here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the service is actually more for the for new emails coming through, right? That service. So that then those Great. are all captured and and you know it just. It obviates any question about, you know, well, somebody went through and deleted all that stuff out of their mailbox. It's in the archiving service. So that that's out of the sort of line of sight of anybody's email client. Um, so that if you end up in a discovery process, then you have a clear and definitive answer. If the emails aren't there, then they didn't go through the system. Yeah, got it. Dorinda. I I think he might have touched on what I was going to say because I believe our current emails are being archived right now, and um, aren't they? Are you? Uh, yeah. All of them are not being archived. The Rackspace does not does not have a. Well, I, I should. I'll preface this by saying I don't know the Rackspace email system very well, so it is possible, but. I'm not sure. Um, and we you can it. go, you can turn up um, litigation hold and discovery in Office 365, but it's substantially more expensive to do it that way because then you have to turn all of the accounts up to a much higher level of access. Um, and so we found that this is a, a, a more economical way to do it. We were under the understanding that it was all being backed up and all being archived through something we were paying for. Um, and I thought through you guys. We have nothing to do with the Rackspace email. You set it up for us. Didn't no, we sure did not. They did not? Uh, they did not. Nope, okay. absolutely not. No, we we kicked and made all kinds of stinking and so noise about that. <laughs> I thought they did something with it, but okay. No, I don't think I don't think you guys, meaning RB, has never had anything to do with our email at this point in time. Point we in time. pretty studiously avoid anything to do with Rackspace. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Ruben. Um, what other questions can I? answer for you. I, I will plug a couple of the pizzas of the user security. Um, so spam filtering and um, it's called link detonation are a couple of the things that that adds in. Um, the other piece that it adds in is uh, credential management for the org whole organization. Um, centralized online um, and uh, most importantly, owned and managed by the organization. 
so that um, you know to you don't have to start using this immediately, but um, it is a really important and powerful tool for um, for maintaining things like website credentials and that sort of thing that multiple folks in the organization might need access to. Um, and that's uh, that's part of this service. And one of the problems, one of the problems we've had with Rackspace is remote signing in, right, Dorinda, you've had continuous. I have, well, we had a problem that we brought you guys in on that if I send something to the treasurer from the treasurer at home, I can't, it doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't go through. But that yeah. wasn't the case when we first started with them. Um, yeah. So something's happened in between. I know there's a lot of people who can't get things on their phone. They can't. Um, so there is a lot of issues um, like that. Absolutely. And, you so know, I, I know that we've sort of beaten this horse to death, but our standard remedy for these types of problems is Office 365. It just, it, it enables... Um, it enables the whole mobility suite. You can, and, and this is depending on your, um, as an organization, your policies and procedures around logging into um, organizational resources and, and what those devices are. Um, but from a technical level, it means that you can log in from your phone, you can log in from your workstation at home, you can log in via a web browser, you know, you can do all of those things. And from an organizational security perspective, we can set um, policies in place that enforce certain configurations, like you have to have a passcode on your phone. Um, for example, you can't have a, a passwordless entry into your um, into your Office 365 account through a phone, so that the organizational information is appropriately secured turns on a whole bunch of features like that. And, you know, one of the things that we've, that we've wrestled with over and over and over again is that, frankly, Outlook is a wonderful tool, but it's a really crummy um, IMAP. You know, IMAP is the style of um, email server that, that um, sorry, Rackspace delivers. Um, and Outlook is a really crummy e uh, IMAP client. <laughs> to throw some more acronyms out there. Um, and so that has presented a whole bunch of challenges. And to Dorinda's point, one of the challenges is that as the security landscape has changed, um, the um, things have had to tighten up in terms of where email can be sent from on behalf of an organization. And that has caused another layer of challenges in terms of using Rackspace and you know where you're coming from if you're logging in from home or if that's a trusted IP address. And there's a whole bunch of sort of other um, issues and features and security implications around all of that, that that have been challenging and frustrating for the town. Yep. So we won't have to have any extra software or anything on our computers, iPads, phones to access this? You can do it all right through the web if you want. You don't have okay. to install any of the apps. And I would suggest, because there's a cost associated with installing the apps, that right. you internally review who gets apps and who only has web access. Right, because many of us, myself included, use the town email relatively sporadically, whereas others, Dorinda, Sarah, et cetera, use it heavily. Yes. Right. So okay. only pay for what you need, for sure. Yep. Questions, anyone? Randy? Um, yeah, I'm sure it's just standard template stuff, but uh, there's conflicting information on rates in here, Ruben, um, in, in a bunch of the terms you know, base rate of $200 an hour and then $145 an hour for uh, discounted base rates and the rates that are attached to the proposal themselves. I think we were looking at $130.50. I'm assuming that that's the just... That's the correct rate and the uh, other boilerplate is our standards. So the rate in the services grid is what 
will go go on for you. And, and that's all... that's a reflecting a heavy discount for the town. We we discount um, our rates for um, for nonprofits and municipalities because we feel like that's the right thing to do. And this is this is based off from estimated hours, and the billings would actually be for actual. So if for some that reason correct. that thirty-six hour uh, allotment of time took. 20 we're going to get billed for 20 hours that's correct and uh, you, there's no guarantees um but i try really hard to estimate high i i would much rather have an uncomfortable conversation about the cost of the project now before we've started and it's too late to do anything about it um than to estimate low and have to come back and say well i gave you a rosy estimate and i wish i hadn't um, because at that point, like you're sort of on the, on the train and you can't really get off. So, um, I, I tend to estimate high, um, and it's pretty rare that we go over. And if we encounter something that's really like, just completely blows our mind, which frankly, I don't expect because we've been peripherally involved in all this stuff for a long time. But if that was the case, then we would open an out of scope ticket and we would tell you what was going on and we would give you an estimate for um, what it would take to um, to accomplish whatever that thing is that is stopping us and and sort of blowing our time estimate out thank you uh security training is that something that you're uh allotting time to train staff here with security features within this new system um yes and i'm gonna have to go dig into s the project to see exactly what that is but yes training is generally just that user security training um that's usually that's where i come in and i scare the hell out of everybody and make it so that you don't want to touch a computer again for a while and No, sir. Those are the questions I have. There okay. I, I guess the only other question I have on this, uh, Ruben, is assuming in the, a relatively short period of time here we gave you the good to go on this, when would you be able to do it? Um, we are horrifically backed up at the moment, and we're, we're working on clearing the backlog. Um, I'm sure you've heard this from us in the past. Um, and the short answer is I don't know right exactly right now where we're at. Um, I, I, mean, I know that we've got a three months, six months, year. Uh, month. well under a year. <laughs> oh, um, I, I, I think um, probably on, yeah, I think we're probably into March or so right now. A good problem to have, but a bad problem to have. Um, it's a problem because nobody's happy when we say what a project execution timeline looks like, and no. so we're, uh, we're working on it. We're familiar. Um, does anybody else have any questions on the email? Um, new to me today uh, is the battery backup uh, proposal. Mm -hmm. You got that about so, three weeks ago. Yeah, but I, I looked at it today for the first time. Um, the battery backup hardware piece, you're recommending that we replace that along with the battery? No. I'm saying I, our recommendation is to replace the UPS. So that's that's the unit and the battery. And I think actually you should, I'm pretty sure that Brittany sent over a proposal for the server that just added the UPS and you should just can the the UPS standalone proposal um, and we just rolled it into the server job. What's honestly what we should have done in the first place, it was an oversight and then we ended up sending a separate like addendum for the battery backup for the server. I've got that, but I'm still confused and I think it's because I don't understand what this is, but this is a separate device that provides the battery backup. 
It is so, a separate device that provides power device, protection. The device itself has failed. Uh, the, you could just replace the battery again, but the device is seven or eight years old at this point. So um, our recommendation is once, once it hits that timeline, it's a really good idea to replace the device itself. It, the sensitivity drops the, um, the words, I'm not wordsing. Um, it's, it's sensitivity to voltage fluctuations goes down over time. Um, APC actually recommends that you only run them for three or four years. Um, yeah, okay, I've, I've got it. I just, okay. I just, I, I didn't understand that we'd already, already replaced the battery possibly multiple times. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, you know, we don't really go too aggressively with replacing gear, um, but we really don't want to be in that position where, you know, I, either a, a piece of hardware behind the battery gets cooked because the battery didn't do its job or, you know, right. it's just a preventable mess. No, nope. got it. Anybody else have any questions about that part of the proposal? I guess quickly, Ruben, and this really wasn't the uh, subject for discussion tonight, but since you sent us a, a revised server proposal, does anyone have any questions about that? I have not had a chance to study that uh, study that proposal. And I think at the present time, we've basically decided that we're in a, at least a temporary holding pattern on the on the server. Um, I guess the the question though is. And again, here we go. If we said today we want to go ahead with the server, we're talking about spring. the end of the summer next year or something like that. So we're, uh, we'd we'd be into spring. Six months. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions about any of that? So is that the same time frame, Ruben? March. It, I would say we're we're yeah. And lead lead time one, is on one equipment. of them would have to come first. <laughs> lead time on equipment is an, an issue. No, no, we, the supply line is, I mean, it's ugly, but it's not that ugly anymore. It's, it's better. Yes, sir. Clarification, I know you guys are talking back and forth, but the emails did come in as early as March. We don't have a, did he, did, did Ruben give us a time for the server? He said one of them has to come first. So what is the server, six months, we would say, or? You say in March for both the server and the email. Spring. Yeah. I would say, and this might not be the right answer, but I would say from my point of view, the, the email is the urgent priority. Um, we're very concerned that that's got us in a bad situation. Uh, not we agree. Function. Yeah. The, okay. The server is, um, uh, I believe, the server is running a supported operating system. And so it, your, your hardware is getting old and a little tired, but it's also not exhibiting immediate signs of failure. Um, so from an operational perspective, I think you'll be in a far better place um, at the end of the Office 365 project. And I, I think that makes sense. Okay. One yes. Right to prioritize that one. Yeah. Just off the top of your head, Ruben, if we were to go to a cloud-based system, would that be more or less money for a server set up? Um, so this is a question that we get a lot, and my answer is the same. You have to define what you mean by cloud-based, right? So, so for the town, for example, the driver for a physical server in the building is the NIMRIC system that runs the, the data files and everything sit on that machine. Um, so you could move to NIMRIC online, which would take, um, take your main line of business application and put it up in the cloud. Um, I don't recall if you use QuickBooks and the QuickBooks multi-user setup. Um, all of your accounting, all of your bookkeeping, and all of that is is in Nimric, correct? Yes. Okay. So, um, 
presuming that there are no other line of business applications and you literally just need file access and like shared access to files, then I would go so far as to say you don't need a server at all, whether it's a virtual or not. You could probably do almost everything that you need to do with Office 365. And so direct answer to your question, Dorinda, that would be far less expensive than the capital expense and the ongoing maintenance of either a virtual server or replacing the physical machine in the building. Um, the challenge is that um, that's a substantial project and there's a long tail on getting things set up um, and sort of moved across. And it's a little in conflict with the age of the physical machine that you have right now. So you're saying doing a transition to the cloud with the existing machine would be a challenge? Well, okay. I, you could, you know, you could stand a virtual server up in any one of, you know, a hundred online services. That I find generally is significantly more expensive. Like you don't have the capital expense of purchasing a piece of gear, but the operating expense, when you amortize it out over four or five years, the lifespan of a machine, it always ends up substantially more expensive and sometimes expen exponentially more. So you're, what you're basically, I, I just wanna be sure I'm getting this right. So to go to a cloud-based system, we might not need a server at all. To move, you could. But to, wait a minute, let me, let me just finish. But to do the transition okay. to move to the cloud based, we need a good, reliable server. And you're concerned that our current server is not capable of doing that? Reliable that might be a slight oversimplification, but it's pretty, it's, it's close enough. <laughs> um, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to see this server running for another year. Um, I, I think the risk of it suffering some sort of a mechanical failure starts to get very high. So I, I, I what I'm, I guess, trying to say is I, I don't think you have the time to, um, to do a really nice orderly move over to Office 365 necessarily, not because we can't move the data, but because the workflows around it are going to take a bunch of work to figure out in terms of you know who accesses what and where the data lives and and what lives where and and all of that so there's sort of an operational um you know how you go about what you're doing side of things that's quite separate from you know dragging and dropping a bunch of folders from one place to another and there's no for lack of a better word, I'm going to say feasible short-term solution to that. I mean, we can't rent a rent a server for six months, or you could, but the expense of doing that migration, um, you know, the the physical That's piece of hardware is is, is not. It's you know, it's several thousand dollars, but it's not. Um, the labor is is pretty close yeah. to the same. Yeah. And you're gonna you're gonna take that on either way, um, and unfortunately, this is a conversation that we've had several times. Where, you know, in an ideal world, we would be having this conversation, and the server had a couple years left in in its life, and we could do a nice sort of easy migration up to Office 365. We could go through all the calculus of seeing, you know, if there are any things that um, that you're doing that preclude that move because I don't I don't want to sort of lead you down a path of well you could do this thing and then pull the rug on you later and say oh well I didn't realize there was this other thing that you're um, that lives on the server that means that you just have to do another one um, there's sort of that discovery piece as well. Okay. I think I'm all set for now. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you, Robert. Thank you all. Time. Absolutely. Glad to do it. If you have other questions after you guys talk, definitely give me a shout. You will. We know where you live. That's Thank right. You. Thank <laughs> you. Right. Thank you all. Have a good night.
Oh, baby. And Dorinda, did you, did you want to talk about the? Um, we'll do it at the end. Do it at the end? Just do okay. it at the end. Okay, all right, okay. Um, highway report, gentlemen. Don't all jump in at once. Here. Right. Uh, well, as far as equipment's concerned, uh, we have uh, hopefully the transfer case for the Freightliner will be back in by the end of the week. How long has that been down? Uh, I've been working on it for the last couple of weeks. All right. Off. Yeah. And that's the transfer case? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the transfer case? The freight liner. Okay. And are we able to repair the existing transfer yeah. case? Yeah, no, I've already got the new parts in. Great. That's good news. Yeah. Uh, just got to get it back together in the, in the truck. Yep. Yeah. We got some more grading to do, but other than that, we've pretty much put all our material down there. Right so we're pretty much out. <coughs> we drained all our stuff from the test. When you say you're out, what? Uh, I haven't looked. How are you budget wise? I was taking the gravel out of our pit, so I, that wasn't part of the budget. No, but how are you with budget? I can't give, I don't yeah. have a budget thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. status in front of me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'll be honest with you, I have no clue. Okay. Well, we've got to be over on material. I would think so. Well, have to be. With FEMA. Well, but, yeah, but yeah, FEMA's yeah. out in outer space somewhere. I mean, yeah. <laughs> in right. terms of looking at the, at the right. money we've spent where versus what we budgeted, we're way, world, way over. In a perfect world, as you would say, what we budgeted, we're probably not putting that material, that went to FEMA work, that went to uh, right. remedial work, right? Yeah. Yeah, repair work. Yeah. No, not all of, it. like if you are using material, you know, and if it's coded for FEMA, it's not affecting your budget. Right. That's what I thought. Yeah, well. It affects our cash flow, but not our budget. Right. Okay. Well, then our budget's probably okay. We'll have to check into it. Yeah. I'll have to look. I haven't, I did not look um, before. Didn't I give out the last meeting or the meeting before? Two meetings ago, two meetings ago there was a budget status report. Um, I did not see it. I can see it. I don't have mine. Right. Yeah. The questions, the questions I've been getting are, you know, is this the way the roads are going to be for winter? Or are we done with all the repairs and certainly I've been hearing that from people on East Hill because they redid East Hill to the extent they are but, but there's still some yet. tricky nasty places on East Hill and other roads around town but we're going to live with those until spring is that the theoretically not they're going to put the uh, remember we're going to have blocks we had the concrete blocks and we're going to put those in yep Eric and I have talked uh, maybe uh, if we can we'll put that culvert back in uh, Oh, Bill Prees, what? I don't yeah, the, the big culvert. The it's big culvert that washed out, yeah. that popped up, the piece popped yeah. up. We got to do something there. I've been, you know, my heart's been in my throat all. I mean, somebody could have a. So Me we're thinking too. of taking that pipe and putting it back in the best we can. And then so we'll widen that out a little bit. Yeah. But, and then, of course, the one by weeds, I mean, that's got to be done. I. Yep, I they're think they're going to be doing that. They're working their way towards that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Those are the two. Those yep. are the two worst ones. Yep. Yeah. And what is the, what is the pile of material beside the road with the cones around it? What's that? Ah, uh, just haven't got to it. Yet. I think I think uh, they were going to try to fill in that washout, but that's where a culvert is, and they can't fill that in, so they're going to end up moving that material. Okay. Because they've got to. We've got to replace that culvert come springtime or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. But there um, wasn't really much they could do with that material there after they put it there. So they're going to end up moving it. Using okay. Because okay. the first pass by with the snowplow, that's going to get shot into the ditch. Yeah, maybe tomorrow morning. Could be tomorrow morning. Watch your mouth. 
So uh, I see my, my beloved associate and friend, Mr. Uh, Ray Hill, is here on the, on the Zoom. Hi, John. Can you hear us? We can't hear you. Are you muted? Are you muted, John? How's that? Great. Much better. That thank better? you. Much better, thank you. So, uh, so John, uh, as I think both Eric and Victor know, John lives up on Wood Road, and he has expressed to me over time, over and over again, concerns about about Wood Road, and I suggested that he uh, he come on the Zoom and give it to us all right between the eyes about what he can and should happen on on Wood Road. So, uh, he talked. He, if correct me, John, if I'm wrong. He talked. We talked about a lot of things. We yep. talked about how narrow the road was, how the ditches were wide and it made the road narrow, uh, how the stones in those stone ditches are higher, so when they plow, it's going to be an issue. That you need gravel, you need a crown uh, in front of, uh, at some point, in front of Iona Kemp's. You've got to cut the road down. And uh, so what he, what I got from him is, he really wants to ask Eric, what's your plan for this year? We're, we're going we're gonna to grade the road and make it as best as we can for winter. That's all we have for an option right now. Okay, when you grade the road, are you going to, I think, you know, there's two, two thoughts there. We don't, don't sometimes we don't want to really crown the road a lot. No, we're just going to clean the edges off so the water can get off the road. So, I guess, I guess it's up to you, John. You get some more questions or desires, or. Well, I'm de I'm delighted to hear that there's uh, we're on the list finally before winter because there's a couple of dangerous uh, spots that you know, the road narrows down to one lane. It's right at the blind turn where you don't have time to react. So um, I, I'm glad uh, we're going to have a plan to <clears throat> make the water somehow get into the ditch. Uh, you know, they did a beautiful job of making some great big ditches, but they're so big that, uh, you know, narrowed the road down and they're big, rough stones. So if your wheel ever went off, you'd, you'd have a hard time. Uh, so I, I hope that we can address that uh blind uh, first blind corner and uh, make it wide enough so two cars can pass safely uh, and then just generally uh, you know we've been waiting I know you're out of money and uh, no point in complaining when there's no money but, but w when there is money and I understand that uh, maybe next year FEMA would have some money so we could um, address some of the underlying issues that were there before the flood um, I, I just want to make sure that we have a plan that isn't just business as usual because there were problems. I talked to Eric a year, his three, nine months ago about it. And, uh, you know, yes, yes, we're going to next year, we're going to work on the ditches. So I know it's been on his radar, but um, uh, I kind of interested in knowing what is going to be done before uh, winter and discouraged to hear that you've shut the there's no more gravel and uh, that the, that the, uh, and I know you're very limited. So um, I, I hope there's an opportunity to sort of find out what's going to happen and uh, before we're just whining afterwards. Well, I mean, next, next summer we have uh, a plan that the three of us are putting together as far as rebuilding that road. That's one of the roads right. that that is on the list to get done for the FEMA work. Um, it's a money issue, but it's more of a material issue. We just there's just not a lot of material out there right now. We, everybody's exhausted through everything, so right. we're going to have to grade it, drop it down a little bit, and 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 uh, hopefully we can get through the winter without any problems. That's really so that I mean, I, I hope there's an opportunity before the major work is done to uh, sort of find out what's going on and make sure that uh, we're we, we think it's going to work. And for the winter, can we get an idea of uh, 
with the limited amount of time and money there is, what is going to be addressed and what isn't. And um, yeah, we're going to go up there with the machine and see what we can do, and then I guess we'll determine how much we can get done or not. And you keep saying before winter, and I want to remind you, this is winter. <laughs> <laughs> Could be tomorrow morning. Yes. So you, you can, you know, we've tried to be patient and understand there's no money, but um, it's been kind of a, a dangerous situation all, all summer. So I'm glad to hear you. We're on the on the plan. Um, and I guess we'll talk to you when you come up the road. And I, in all fairness to John Grayhill is that, you know, there's other people that have mentioned we've, we've had emails and stuff mm -hmm. and we've had emails from all over town. Oh, absolutely. Right. And, <laughs> and like, like our Sarah says, this has been a, a very devastating year. Challenging year. Yes. Challenging. Hey, thanks. But I, I, I don't want to just be a whiner, and I don't want to end up after the work is done whining again. So I hope the selectmen will support some kind of uh, plan that, that can be reviewed. Uh, Peter mentioned that the FEMA engineers were going to get involved in that work, which would be great. But I just don't want to go back to whatever we had before the flood because that didn't work. So we got to try something uh, new, and I'm no highway engineer, but I'd love to hear some ideas for some uh, ways to keep the water going to the ditch because there's all kinds of places where the water has traveled right down the road. It could be a 10 foot bank on one side and the road washed right out. Uh, and I don't know whether that's maintenance or the road design or material. It's over my head, but um, I think we need to try something else. Well, I think the only thing I would add to that, John, is I think step one in that process was the was the ditch work, which in the short run run may have annoyed you more than it helped you. But until we have until we have good ditches, there's no place for the water to go, regardless of how the roads ground up. Well, and I think that's I think that's actually uh, if you look at some other towns that don't have ditches as marvelous as ours, uh, they actually fared better. And so I, I would challenge that. And, and again, I, I'm just a person that drives around and becomes an expert through the windshield. But uh, that's the kind of thing, I think, a question we ought to ask ourselves. Uh, because I know we got halfway done with the big ditches, but uh, they're not doing any good now, and they're, they're worse than if we'd done nothing. So I, I, would, I think that's the kind of question we need to discuss with somebody who's, uh, you know, let's look at some other towns and see how their roads have, have uh, held up. But uh, I, I, I'm not at all convinced that that's the, <clears throat> just saying we're going to build more ditches is going to do it. Deeper ditches. Randy. So I, to, your, to your point about looking at what the plan was ahead of time, uh, John, I, I, think, I think Victor, um, Steve, and Eric have, are putting together you know, bid packs for that road work that I don't understand why that wouldn't be able to be reviewed and and whatnot as, it, as it's getting ready to go out. So, um, you know, these guys are going to put together a package and, and, you know, I'm sure that that's something that could be reviewed as it's going out to contractors. Well, I, that, that would feel more constructive than waiting until it's done and griping. So that, that'd be great. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you. Anything else in the road report, boys? Uh, do you want to do the curb cut while we got Eric here? I'm sorry, what? Do you curb want to do cut. the curb cut while we have Eric curb here? Curb cut, yes. Uh, up on uh, North Bear Swamp, they have a loft and they need to access it. There's a drawing there. Um, looking at the site, uh, a standard 15 inch culvert, plenty sufficient. Yeah, and you've approved this. Yes, anyone else want to take a quick look at this, Victor? Yeah, big friend, you want to take a quick look at this, or are you satisfied that? Oh, I want to take a quick look at it. Please. There you go, north there, up towards the top. About Sure, John. 
It doesn't matter. No, I just said I'd have pretty to much everything. I'll probably have a pretty good back order. Right. No, it's not. Right. It's pretty simple. Is that pretty flat up there? Fairly flat, yeah. It drops off down to where they're gonna they're gonna have to build. Well, the only reason I mean, I, and I don't want to second guess you. I apologize. Yeah. If that's I mean, not it's not intent. totally flat. You know, 15 inch. We're yeah, but it's not gonna be carrying that much water there. Okay. All right. I'll. Yep. I'm all set. Thank you. So we need a vote on that, Peter. Yep. Peter? You're willing to make a motion? Yeah, I was just gonna do that. Good. Peter, I would. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the um, permit application for. Uh, 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 hold on. I just read it and I forgot it. Senior W.L. Martin. Martin LLC. W.L. Martin LLC. As presented. Wait, where is that on North Air Swamp? Is there an address yet? It does there not have an address. It's 1.1 miles from Story Road. Thanks. Is there a second? Okay. Thank you, Randy. All in favor of approving the uh, the driveway uh, permit for or driveway road cut permit for W L Martin LLC, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Okay, we've approved it. Thank you. So is there anything else, gentlemen? Uh, no, we were just discussing that we've got some proposed uh, road upgrades for that we would like to put out before the first of the year for next spring. So get a little bit ahead, get people a chance to go over it, maybe give us a good price to get it in their schedule. Yep. That's what we were talking about. Okay. Okay. So we're a little ahead of schedule, but it looks like the people are here for the... Oh, uh, I thought you were going to talk about Mead Road at this time. Do we have time? Oh, well, we could do that. Yes, I okay. thought you were going to... Five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Okay. Go for it. Oh, I was uh, just... Uh, uh, Sam sent, sent us an email. I'm sure everybody read it. Yeah. And uh, what I saw was a stone. I'm asking, I'm not, I saw a stone, and then on my rock space email, which is not that great, but the other thing was his car was in the way, is that when it was in the yard? So the email is, so you can see in the picture, you can see um, them throwing a rock, a large stone in the roadway, and then there's another stone that's been put in the roadway, and then parked partially in the roadway. Now, my, my only question was, is, uh, is yeah. that stone, you say that's in that 22-foot area that we are concerned about? Yeah. And is that stone and that activity on your side of the road, meaning from the center road towards your property or the center of the road towards his property? And, and in this picture, it's not just one, it's two, is what I'm seeing yeah. in the picture. That is probably based, and this is an estimate on my part, but five feet or so from the markings that were placed when we were there on site before. What markings? Uh, the, how the stones were pushed back while we were on site. The ones that originally had lined right on the side of the roadway, yes. Towards the out onto the French property. Yeah. Um, 
that's the picture that was sent. Um, so, so they're farther away than they were when we were there. No, they're they're Close. back up on the roadway, oh, okay. the traveled portion of road. Okay. Right on the edge. Right on the very edge where it was agreed to have them moved from prior to. And I guess the question is, you believe he put those stones there? Oh, I didn't see the video. Sorry. And the other one's just down a little bit further there. I mean, yeah. ultimately, nothing should be put in the roadway. You know, um, and this has been addressed a couple times. Inside that 22 feet. Yes. Okay. And it clear, clearly violates the agreement that everybody had. Plus right. when we settled this the last time. So I mean, have you hit those with your car? No. Do you have to turn out? Well I have to go around them. Okay. No. I'm, I'm not gonna hit them. Yeah. And I'm not gonna move them. But ultimately they legally can't be on the roadway. Yeah. You know, and this has been going no, on. And that also isn't as as Randy just said, that isn't what they agreed to. What's their what's their response, if well, any? You had mentioned last year in the Zoom meeting when we first started with the speed bump and the alterations to the road. Um, that was when you first addressed the policy and what couldn't be done. And then when you guys came out and yeah. brought this up this year, and that's when it was addressed again. I mean, it should be as simple as no alterations to the roadway and don't put things in the roadway. It should be that simple, um, but it just keeps happening. Sorry about that. So what do we do? You want to go down and have a chat with them, Victor? Do we send them a letter? What do we do? Sad. I'm I'm baffled. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. No, I don't want to go down and talk to them because then I'll be accused of siding with them. So I think the only fair thing to do is. Well, not just me, any of us are going to be accused of, like we were before, of catering to them. So just send them a letter. I agree. Okay. I mean, kind of separate us from doing anything other than uh, what we're supposed to do. And then it's clearly documented what was said, right. when it was sent. Right. Like, everything can be documented about it, whereas a conversation is... Oh well, Victor right. told me this. Yeah, he Victor said it was okay. Right. Right, 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 whatever. Right, right, right. We don't. We don't want to be there. Right. Is there a fine based on compliance? What's that? Is there a fine based on compliance? Not that I know. I think there's well, there's the latitude to impose a fine. I believe yes. Yes. So in the legislation, there is a fine. Um, so for so it's it's. Uh, Title 19, Highways Chapter 11, Protection of Highways, Subsection 1105, and the fine is up. So it says, shall be fined not more than $1,000 plus actual cost of repairing the damage and reasonable attorney fees. So that could be yeah. Excuse me. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to remind everybody here that when you're addressing the board, you need to address the chair. Yeah. Okay? So that way we keep order. Okay. Well, what I would, what I would suggest is this. We write a letter and give them the opportunity to remove those stones or move them back, I guess would be what we should say. What I will do is, uh, with Sarah's help, I'll draft a letter, send it around for everybody to look at, and then we'll send it out. And to the extent those are two pretty small stones, my recommendation is we give them, we give them until our next select board meeting, whatever date that is, to, to remove those stones. And, just warn him that if he doesn't do that, we're going to have to pursue further action, which might include a fine. I don't know what else we can do. Hold on one second. 
I, I support the letter, and two weeks' time frame for our next meeting is plenty adequate to move move that. And take five minutes to remove them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Can it include vehicles as well? So, like the parking in the roadway. I, I don't. See, I see no reason to park within the roadway. Any vehicles? I mean, he has 40, over 40 acres of property, so I don't see a reason to be parking vehicles in the roadway. He's yeah. not blocking the roadway. I think that may be a little out of our purview. With right. Right. I mean, it's I mean, frustrating. I will, I will, I will agree with you, especially in the winter time when people park their car alongside of the road in, in front of their house, and the plow has a hard time getting by. That makes it a little tough. I know we don't plow that road, but you know, I don't. That's that's a little tougher one. I mean, I mean, is it there all the time? Often. Yeah. Let's let's pick our battles. I, I mean, there are people. Unfortunately, there are people parked. Fortunately or unfortunately, there are people all around town who park in the roadway at one time or another, and some do it more than others. That's for sure. But I agree. I don't think we can. Don't know. Peter. Yes. I know. I know. I know. I Uh, Kyle Weaver and Rita Woodard cannot make it, so Gloria, could you? This is for the. That's for the applicants to sit. Here, here, and also maybe we can just work this so that we can get the JPs and the Board of Abatement closer to the to the meeting here. Well, the push this back. Well, I mean, I don't. I don't. It's just so um, I know that we've got everybody in the C stuff. So maybe somebody can sit here. John, you can sit here. Okay. Go there. Yeah. No, this is for Gloria. Oh, You're going to sit here. Gloria, I'm going to put you here. There you go. Hi. There you go, Victor. Welcome. Thank you. I'm friendly, relatively friendly. Jan, there you go. There you go. And the listeners get a prominent position, so you guys should come up here, too. So, Dorinda? Dorinda. Sarah? Yes, yes. We're not going to address Kyle Weaver and Renee Woodard tonight. No, I, I just want to say something. In your, in your packet, there is. Did you get. Chris, did you get them? Thank you. Um, did everybody get one of these? I don't know what's the deal. Oh, there it is. So, we've got everybody here, and everybody's got the information. Peter, as you notice that in, I've given a uh, sequence of events going through. Yep. Okay, so just to give everybody an idea about how to work through this yep. process, because it's not something that happens very often. Okay. So, yeah, it. Kyle Weaver, so here's the deal. Um, uh, do you want to call the meeting to order, and then I'll tell you? Sure. Go ahead, Chair. I will call the Board of Abatement meeting to order. Welcome, everyone. And we definitely have a majority here. So, right? So the Board of Abatement, Gloria and Carol. 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 Um, is made up of the Select Board, the Justices of the Peace, the Listers, the Town Clerk, and the Treasurer. In this case, the Treasurer and the, is also a JP. So we have to have a majority of the board here to go continue. Peter's the chair. If you have any questions, you should address him. And then that's the, 
we can go forward because we have a majority. That's it. Go ahead. Thank you, but you never answered my question. We're what? not going to consider Kyle and Renee's. That's for the board to decide. So I just we don't have it. We don't have anything from them. We do. There's a sheet. Yep. Here there's a, there's oh, it a, is. There's a one-page sheet. So I, this is for the board to decide. But Reedy uh, emailed me this afternoon to say that she was very ill, and they have had uh, they've had some bad luck in their family in the recent weeks. So she well, asked if we could reschedule them. You can either reschedule them or it's up to the board's discretion to go ahead. I said you could also write something. So she asked to reschedule. And considering that those are the circumstances, that's where we are. Okay. And otherwise, we've got Gloria here. She's number okay. two. Okay. Well, I would suggest since, since they would be first on the agenda that we agree to reschedule. Yeah. Does anybody have any objection to that? I mean, there's not, I mean, there's some information here, but relatively little information and I'd like to be able to hear from, yeah, yeah, hear from that. Yeah. So unless anybody unless anybody disagrees with that, I'm going to rule that we will uh, reschedule that, Kara. So with that, Gloria, yeah. welcome. Sorry, this is this is uh, this uh, board of abatement thing is new to me and new to the rest of us. So we're uh, we're finding our way. What would you like me to do, Sarah? Uh, I would like you to follow the board the list of procedures. List so of procedures. At the hearing. I did that. Now, uh, and now Gloria takes her and any other witnesses on Gloria's behalf will take her. Oh. Okay. That's number two. Okay. Do you have a written oath, or do you like me to make up an oath? No, you can't. We have a I'm pretty good at making. Oh, it's right there. There's Sarah. There you go. Okay. Uh, are you guys witness. going to be witnesses as well? Yes. Why don't you come up here then and state your names? Okay, so this is applicants and listers. Yes, applicants, witnesses, and listers. So these okay. are the witnesses, and those will be the list. Okay, so here we go. Do all of you applicants and listers, under the pains and penalties of perjury, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you give in the abatement hearing under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Okay, listers? You're good? Okay, thank you. And that everybody should state their names. We need to know who we've got. I so, mean, the list well, she's she tough, isn't she? Just being thorough. Yeah, we need to know who the witnesses are. So, Gloria, we know who you are. Sorry, Sorry Kirkpatrick. Okay. Troy Kirkpatrick. Okay, and you are neighbors? Sons. 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 Okay. And thank they you. were there when the flood happened. I wasn't. Okay. So they dealt with everything to begin with. Okay. Thank you. Um, and listers, why don't you introduce yourselves? I'm Annette Halaz, I'm a lister. I'm Jennifer Sheridan, I'm a lister. Okay, thank you. Um, and do any of you have any questions before we start the process? I don't. Okay, so I'm supposed to request any Board of Abatement members to make any disclosures due to conflicts of interest that they may decide to recuse themselves from, uh, from this hearing. Is there anybody who feels they have a conflict of interest or need to recuse themselves? Well, I'll disclose that Gloria and I worked together for uh, a long period of time, but I will honestly say I don't think that would create a conflict of interest. You know, in a small town, we're familiar with each other, but it doesn't go beyond that. Okay. But if anyone thinks I should recuse myself, I'd be open to that. But you're not concerned that you have a conflict? I, no, this. I'm not. I don't believe Okay. Um, ask the applicant to identify the statutory abatement category under which the abatement request is being made and then present his or her testimony and other evidence followed by testimony of any other witnesses on behalf of the petitioner. Well, Gloria, you are up. Yeah, and you want me to do what? <laughs> <laughs> Friday? You when you 
when you check off on your on your abatement, there are under what statute would you be qual what what here I'll help you out. So the conditions for requesting an abatement are no probability that the tax can be collected. And this can be requested only by the town. The bill was not properly assessed. The person liable for the bill is deceased. Financial hardship. Collection would work an injustice. Create an undue expense for the town. This may be pressed to by the town. And property was lost or destroyed. And I believe you checked property was lost or destroyed. Yes. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. So, tell us about your situation. Uh, my house is unlivable. The flood blew my basement floor out. Um, I had, what, five feet of gravel in my basement? Uh, five yards of gravel in my basement? I got grass growing in the basement right now. And it was a finished basement. Uh, I had water upstairs. My floors are all ruined. My cupboards are ruined. And they said that I would have to gut the place from the basement to the roof. So, and I just barely had a new roof put on it. Mm. So it, it's, I blew my water pump out. Uh, my furnace, they said, is not usable, not fixable. And that was a new furnace after Irene. Uh, so all, everything would have to be it would have to be gutted and completely done over from the basement. Right, and I'm the basement floor when they were down there. There are big slabs of cement that are blown right out, and uh, there are hollow spots where it does it where it looks solid, but when you pound on it, it's hollow underneath. So I don't know how much damage or what it, you know what it would take to. The whole floor would have to be taken up, I believe, and redone. I have a hole outside of my house that's what goes right to the footings or below the footings, and it's probably what six by eight, six by six, six by six in diameter. Yeah. So you're not currently living there. No, I'm living with him living. right now. Okay. Until I find a place. Okay. Witnesses, do you have anything to add to that? No, basically what she said. I mean, just, I mean, to look at what's got to be done to it. it you know, it's, we even talked with Kevin, um, and he basically said it's, you know, looking at more than 50% of the value of the home just to fix it. And is it your plan to fix it or no? No. I've been hit twice there, and, and it would cost me more to fix it than it would be okay. worth. And it's in an area now where I can't even sell it. Can't even what? I wouldn't even be able to sell it. You know, they told me it's not in a flood zone, it's in a floodway. That's worse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what is your plan to do with that half acre? Hey guys. Really, cheap. so the, uh, to keep this orderly, Gloria should give her testimony. Then the list, there's, there's a whole procedure for following. This. Oh, okay. I, don't, I, I know you guys don't do this, but I want it to be done correctly. Yep. Okay. Just that. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hold so your question. Really mission stage now. <laughs> Listers. Sounds cut and dry to me. Yeah, but you can't live in it. To me, that's. No longer a, a half of a house. Yeah. Okay. Now you can invite the applicant. Okay, other board member. <laughs> <laughs> so this do support the application? I do support it. I mean, yeah. you can't live in it. It's okay. What do? What what does do you plan to do with it? I have no idea. There's been talk of the, of the town of FEMA buying it out, but I don't know. I haven't heard anything more, so I don't know, but I know I can't the, live in it. I'm sorry, have you applied for the buyout? Yes. Okay. So you should be at some point here. Yeah. And Do they have any idea when that will be, when we're here? Sarah, that's a question for you. 
next steps on the buyout. Who knows? Just, I'm just waiting for the state to come in. They're well aware of your situation. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Were you able to receive any insurance um, payments or FEMA payments at this point? I had no insurance, and FEMA paid me like 14000 for the. So. I have a question, Peter. Yes, Bridget. Um, I just wanted to ask Sarah if it's appropriate. Has she reviewed in lieu of this conversation the paperwork that's been submitted for the buyout and everything's in order? Have I, have I reviewed it? Just in your opinion, um, are the parties involved? Have they? Is there application for the town buyout? Is, are, is that all in order? It's in order and it's been approved by the select board and sent to the state. Thank you. So, and maybe it's here somewhere and I don't see it, but um, what exactly are you asking for? That we abate the taxes as of the date of the flood? No, I've paid. On a portion, I've on paid. A portion attributable to the house? I've paid the, ta the first installment on the taxes after the flood. I paid those. So, I don't know what the procedure is here. Yeah, that's what I'm asking is what what are what are you asking to be abated? The property taxes. I can't live in the house. Okay. The, the, the total the property ta taxes total? Are just for the house. Well, for whatever I couldn't after the flood. Like I said, I've paid the first installment. I know there's another one coming up right away. I mean, okay, well, here, I, I mean, this, this is where I'm a little lost and confused, too, Sarah. Yeah. I mean, basically, I believe it's up to our board to respond to her request mm -hmm. and say what we think is reasonable, right? So really what we're doing to, at this stage of the hearing is we're taking testimony from the applicant. We're taking testimony from the listers because they're the experts in property valuation. And then we close the hearing for deliberations, and we deliberate, right. and then we talk to them. But right. Florida, okay. that's how that works. So we, okay. And we have 30 days from the time we close okay. the, the, the deliberative process. Okay. So in other words, the board, Gloria, might decide, we're going to recess this meeting until December 1st. We'll pick it up, and then we'll have our deliberative session. That's when the clock ticks for 30 days. Or else they may close tonight, go into deliberative session, make their decision today, or not they have 30 days to issue a decision. It'll be in writing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But now yeah. is your chance to say, this is what I want abated. I, I want the all the year's taxes. I want you, you, this is where you get to make your request. Not necessarily the board will go with it, but you should make your request here. Don't look at me. <laughs> well, when does, Property taxes start when? In April? Yes. As of, they're taxed as of April 1st. So I would live there until April, till the flood, so I expect to pay some. I, I'm going to tell you that there's a court issue on this that's been gone back and forth in the, in the course, because the, if the assessment year begins April 1st, Dorinda is absolutely right, the tax year begins July 1st. That's what I was going to say. The tax so year begins July 1st, It goes correct. back and forth. But there's... I'm sorry? You're a lawyer. But is the tax based on the, well, the April house? 1st? Yes. Not the, okay. yes. We so. base our taxes as of April 1. Whatever exists. Yeah, but April when it, the tax year is July to July, though, right? But there's demo. Right, like, yeah, my question is if uh, Gloria paid her first installment, that covers from July 1 through September, right? Mm -hmm. it does, or is that not correct? That's not correct. It's okay. all that's how the town of Middlesex collects their taxes. Mm -hmm. As of they divide it into four installments. We could say everything was due at once and make them pay the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So you can't look at how the installments are done. Okay, but does that cover like does the tax bill for the full year, regardless it, of how we're gonna does to that cover April bill. one to March thirty one or July one to June thirty? I interpreted the law as to be from April 1st because that's how the house is taxed. I, but 
I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. Well, that's a good, I've seen that's a good question. We need, to, we need to figure out. My, my understanding has always been that the, the value was April 1st, but the tax year was uh, July 1 to June 30th. But I could be wrong on that. I don't know. Yeah. I guess we better find out. When, when we anyway. go to deliberation, we can figure that out. Yeah, yes, right. exactly. correct. We can. So just, just for information purposes and to get it into the record, I'm looking at the Lister card, and uh, the land value is 39600 The dwelling value is 75000 and 17000 for site improvements, $900 for outbuildings. That's how it's divided up. So does anybody? I have a question for Mr. Um, do you have a sense as to how the valuation on the um, house and the property has changed? I, I guess the house is destroyed, but the property is the same. Okay. We haven't heard anything otherwise. When you mentioned, was, was your property damaged? Your property itself, not the house, but the land? No. I mean, she's got the big hole in the front yard where the water was actually what happened was the water whirlpooled in the corner. So it washed out some of the property also? Oh, it sucked right? it down and blew it up through the basement floor is what happened. So it just relocated the property? Yeah, inside so the house. Inside the house, yeah. Okay. And the shed is ruined, right? It's yeah, yeah, all the buildings are ruined. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the land probably other than cleaning all the mud out of it. And contaminated probably. It, yeah, but mm -hmm. that's do you, do you have a well? Yes. Mm -hmm. And at a dripping point in the basement. And so that's gone too. Mm -hmm. Well it's I don't know, but that's where the basement floor blew up. So And it, we we drew water out of it. We had to buy a new pump and everything and we drew water out of it to like um wash yeah yeah pressure wash downstairs but there's still mud everywhere but it seemed to be working fine the well it seemed to be yes huh. well the well would have the water anybody drink the water no no no, no okay. i wouldn't drink the water okay. <laughs> Not until you have the water tested at the yeah. very least. Of it. Right. We wouldn't have, no, we used it for cleaning and yeah. rinse my hands off from all the stuff, but okay. Okay. No, no drinking. Thanks. Uh, someone said earlier that the zoning administrator said that it was more than 50% damage. Did he give you any clearer number, like, or did he just say more than 50%? Well, he said he wouldn't move back into it either. You, it would cost more to repair it than it was worth, you. he said. You had the paperwork you got. Oh, I didn't bring that. Okay. Well. I believe I brought that. One, one of the issues they told us, because it's in floodway, to rebuild it required us to bring everything up out of the flood zone. Correct. He said I would probably have to raise it a minimum of five feet, and that would impact my neighbors. Yeah. So can I ask a final question? Um, it says here, it looks like here that the glory you have a life estate in the property? Uh, yes, I just turned, I t went through a lawyer and Turned the property over to the kids with my uh, with me with a life estate that I can do. Buy, I can sell, do whatever I want with it until that, I pass does away. Does that include selling it? Yes. Okay. Isn't that called an enhanced life estate? Uh, it could be. I didn't bring that with me. I do have the right to sell it. So, okay. And what about your septic? Where's your septum? Do you have a leach field? I, I couldn't tell on this. Yeah, record. I do. Uh, it's toward Crossroad. It's on the side of the house toward Crossroad. Okay. Any other questions, anyone? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will we will deliberate a new course and be back in touch with you. Okay. Okay. Now, Thank you. I, I think you have his address for me because I'm oh. not there.
Is it on your paperwork here? 158 Three Mile Road? No, no, it's 109 Shady Rail Road. 109 oh, that's Shady you Living? Yes. Okay. You got that, Sarah? Mm hmm Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, John. Yeah, you too. Sorry, some of these circumstances. Good luck. Thank you. Next up. Okay, next up. Uh, Carol Maloney and Karen Jeanette. Just yeah. one. Just Carol. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. So before we begin, I need to swear you in. Swear me in. The listers have already been sworn in. Why so, don't you state your name? Carol Maloney. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. Um, so, Carol, under the pains and penalties of perjury, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you give in the abatement hearing under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, and do any of the Board of Abatement members have a conflict of interest? in this matter. Okay. Um, so the first thing we need to do is ask you to identify the statutory abatement category under which your abatement request is being made. And again, I'm confused about exactly what this is, but. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Taxes or charges okay. upon real or personal loss, property lost or destroyed during the tax year. Okay, perfect. Well, it's because the property has been destroyed, right? Yeah, or damaged. Okay. So, tell us about your situation. Well, thank you very much for making time. It sounds like we're all learning a lot <laughs> about a lot of things. Um, whenever you hear stories like Gloria's, it's, I just count my lucky stars. We did have a horrendous situation. Uh, I live in Putnamville, 175, Vermont Route 12, with Karen Gannett. We're co-owners of the property, Karen, unfortunately. Couldn't be here tonight. She would have enjoyed it, I'm sure. Um, we appreciate this consideration. Um, first, I want to acknowledge the town's generosity during the drama and trauma of the flood. It wasn't even the first week, and I think Peter and Sarah were emailing me at 9 o'clock at night saying, and Peter was going to meet the dumpster at 5 a.m. in our neighborhood. Um, so that we could get a dumpster. Uh, a lot was being written about the flooding and the damage at Three Mile Bridge and over the town roads. I saw nothing in Front Porch Forum for several days about Putnamville. And so I wrote to Sarah and sent a few pictures. So we woke up Monday, I think it was the 10th, to four plus feet of water in our house and surrounding our house, basically. So we're the closest to the river and the bridge. So we sit behind Jim and Sherry Page on Route 12 on the east side of Route 12. So we're in a little red house there. Many of you probably seen it back there behind Gloria Dupree and, and Jim and Sherry. And we've done additions and significant improvements over the 50, 18 years we've been there since 2005. In that time, water has come up to our driveway once in the spring of 2011. Uh, November of 2019, the water was high. Some of you remember it, it, the reservoir. So we're upstream on the North Branch and, um, and generally love our waterfront property. So that day, the water came in and it didn't leave for six days. So we didn't have glorious situation where you had rushing water through. We had the late, we became part of the reservoir basically. So our living space, our entryway, our main entry, a finished mudroom, a 12 by 16 space with tile floor and you know, finished wall insulation, a storage area, pantry where we kept food, personal items, freezer, um, Costco items, my treadmill, you know, et cetera, coats, jackets, winter stuff, and our full basement, which is a stone basement that's been weatherized. Um, we're all inundated, over 500 square feet with, by the end of that first day, as you all remember, the water kept rising on Wrightsville. Our, our good friend and neighbor um, was tracking it and sending us hourly. So the water rose until 9 p.m. that Monday night. 
it stopped at about six feet in our house, much like Gloria. So we had six feet of standing water. 90% of our property, our 0.2 acre lot was underwater for the week. Um, I had a canoe, a little canoe. I paddled in one day into the room to grab coats and personal items to rescue them. So it ended up being about 30, 35 to 40% of our finished house was underwater for that week until Saturday. We got in on Sunday. Um, we had lost pretty much everything in our basement. It turned out to be about 15,000 worth of personal items. Um, our shed was six feet underwater as well, which is all of our tools and our toys and our, uh, yard, our yard stuff. Our well was submerged. Um, it tested for E. coli. It, our mound system, which is two years old, was completely underwater. I could paddle right over it. Um, and that did not get ruined. For some reason, we ended up having power through the whole thing. It turns out our panel box is in the furthest back corner, the northeast corner of the house, and it was six inches from the water line. So there were a few good things. We were able to stay in the house. We didn't have water. Um, I mean, we had running water, but it was you know contaminated. Our pressure tank was knocked over and ruined. Our furnace, the propane heater for our mudroom, um, all the electrical, obviously, wall board, wall, we filled a dumpster in a quarter. Like the, the first dumpster that came, we filled that large dumpster with personal items and household debris. Um, we, our driveway was washed out. There's a, uh, there are three drains on, in Putnamville, right, within, there are three driveways. And we have one right at the foot of our driveway on Route 12, and that failed that night and completely washed out our driveway. That's never happened. Um, so the systems are HVAC, water, electrical, and it basically looked like we had to gut everything. We had tons of help, good fortune of having friends, family, neighbors, et cetera, strangers from Syria and Amsterdam, New York City came and helped. Um, we gutted it and it's been like that for months. So basically, we, have a, we had to take out our stairs. We had to come in through another a, a second entrance that we hardly ever use. So I have some pictures. It's basically, we were able to salvage, you know, it basically was torn down to new construction, to studs. So a big chunk of our, so our entryway and our downstairs. So this. I think we've got the pictures. Well, I don't think you got these, but I took them since I submitted my. So basically, we. I mean, there are worse things. We're basically living in a, an unfinished house that was finished. So a big portion of our house was, um, it's uninsulated. It got insulated last Thursday. We still are without heat in that entryway, which is also our only heat source for our bedroom, our primary bedroom over that. Uh, it's, it's not finished walls. They did spray. We decided to go with spray foam because we were never again going to tear out fiberglass insulation and sheetrock. So right now it's spray foamed and painted. They painted it for fire retardant stuff. And we'll, we won't finish it till next spring. Um, so it's, it's a basically, finally we have insulation though after almost four months and hopefully the heat guy, my heat guy will come in and put the propane heater in. We did get a new hot water heater. It's up in our living space. So we've lost actually quality space we put a heat pump hot water heater up to get it out of the potential flood zone. We put, um, the water was three feet. Us and Evelyn Gant, turns out, are on the same elevation because her water came up to three feet, but hers was an unfinished basement, so she didn't have the same impact. But um, So we had the hot water heater upstairs. We had all of our electric had to be taken out and redone, and we had that move, so we have a nice, new piece of art, a 40 inch panel in our living room, our den, um, because we, had, we, have, we have a very small house upstairs and we had to get it out of harm's way. So we moved that up. And yeah, so those also impact, impact our, our um, quality of life in the house. It's, it's a very noisy hot water heater, so when you have the TV on, you can't really hear much. But, um, so we're finally getting settled. We don't have full use of this space yet until it's finished, which will happen, as I said, next year. So 
um, again, it's the furnace was able to be repaired. We were shocked. It was 56 inches underwater for days, um, but our heat guy was able. It's an old, I guess these old things last better than new things, but um, uh, Brian at Alco Energy, Brian, um, was able to repair it. Ours and Evelyn's. It's an oil burner. Uh, we're going to put in heat pump upstairs, uh, but we've got a new hot water heater, a new pressure tank. We need a new propane heater. We have all new electric down there and moved upstairs and insulation. And then we'll finish up, as I said, the finished work. Um, yeah, it's it's almost like a new house, but it has, we, li we schlepped water for six weeks because we had E. coli in our water, so our neighbors, we schlepped water um, and weren't able to take hot showers for almost two months, actually, until the end of August. Okay. It's getting there. FEMA was very, you know, I wasn't expecting anything out of FEMA, honestly. But uh, I have a little, I tallied up. We have have our own spreadsheets. This has been a full-time job to manage this and the contractors, at least for two months it was. We've gotten a total of $28,713 from FEMA, which is pretty remarkable. Okay. Sorry, what was that price again? 28713 What you got from FEMA? Pardon? That's from FEMA. That's from FEMA. Yeah, they were at our house on a Sunday. Monday morning, we had our approval letter in our email. Tuesday morning, we had money in our bank account, our first wow. almost $15,000 in our bank account. Impressive. The time should have such luck. Yeah, it was really? crazy. I, I, we just were shocked. Then we didn't get anything until September, the end of September. Um, but um, they paid, but you don't know what it's for. You have to call them and ask them, and then they call you back, whatever. But we ended up with over almost 29,000. Our repairs to date have been tw less than that, 28.2. So we're about $500 ahead, but we haven't finished our electric. Um, we haven't put in the heater, which is going to be $2,500. And for the propane heater, and we have to finish our stairs. So they have no risers, there are no trim, there's no, you know, it's just rough construction right now. So our hope is that you would consider the loss of a portion of our house for use for several months and still not heated, that its value certainly during this time has been decreased significantly. The property, it had water on it. My organic gardens are, were, you know, I have to dig up potatoes and throw them away and all the green. But that's, I think it'll be okay. It's, you know, there's not a lot of contaminants upstream. It's just road runoff and stuff. So I'm hoping with some work I can repair it. The flower beds weren't ruined. Nothing, the septic wasn't ruined. So okay. the land itself seems, you know, that it's resilient. The house, not so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So anything Lester. you can do, we appreciate. Lex just giving us a pretty good picture of what's going on. Good explanation. Yeah. <laughs> and abatement, the only thing I'm confused at is I know that you can do something with taxes, but it's almost like the value right now, which we wouldn't have any control over for this year, has gone down because of what happened until everything's repaired. So it's like, it seems the only thing that you, you can do is give a little bit of relief for the taxes because you can't you can't charge less but we're going to talk we're going to talk about that when we After, yeah. when we deliberate yeah yeah but it sounds like it was a hardship they, they couldn't stay, like you couldn't stay there for if i read this no we, for, no, no, we, we were able to stay in the house for the whole time water, we slept water um that was the main thing yeah and the toilet the set you know the septic work the mound system kept operating which was amazing which yeah. was yeah, not the door. <laughs> hey, I have a question. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, do you, I assume you didn't have any other insurance that paid for any of this? No homeowners? Thank you. Thank what? You. We're not in the flood zone, right? Right. Our uh, corner of our house, uh, we've been, we got a survey of 12 years ago or so after I mean, um, I that, yeah. and so we're bare, three feet of our corner where there's no right. electric, you know, no utilities um, is in the flood. So we, but the we have no insurance. Homeowners. The only payment you received was from FEMA. Nothing Correct. We did apply to our homeowners and they said if you had set, if you had had 
done some mitigation work like uh, sump pumps and I'm like yeah that wouldn't have helped when you're surrounded by water there's no where for it to go but if we had done that we would have gotten five thousand okay. dollars roughly from our homeowners but we weren't eligible okay. do you have an, an estimate as to how much more you need to spend to get it back to the state it was in the house it was in before the flood just well, good faith estimate because it sounds like you have Spreadsheets and things like that. I think. Less than 10,000 more. I, we're going to do it differently. We're not going to put drywall in it. We're going to do something. We're going to try to be smart about it and not do something that has to be thrown away when it's, you know, there's all kinds of unique materials to just create a finished. It won't look the same. It won't have the same feel as a mm -hmm. house per se. It's like stuff they put in freezers, car washes. That's PVC, uh, corrugated PVC, we think, that you can just zoom out of the studs. Okay. Wash it off and put it back up. So I think we're going to be able to do it for 10. But. Thanks. When did you say your heating system was repaired? But it isn't yet. It's yeah. not in. We don't oh, have Oh, I thought you said it was yeah. that they the were The furnace able to fit. was repaired. The furnace. Yep. Yeah. The furnace was repaired in, in, when did it come in? Late August. Late August? Yeah. And so do you have heat now? We have heat in part of the house, and the heat pump, yes, but not down in the, this space has no heat. The down, the base, the where, entry. You, yeah, where entry. you enter, but the living space yes. where the kitchen yep. and all of that, yep. you do have heat. Yeah, yep. you was okay. able to repair the furnace, it's amazing. Okay. Anything else, anyone? Okay, so I screwed up the first time. I'm gonna do better this time. Um, would you like to make a brief closing statement? Do you have anything to add? No, I've said, I've said way too much probably. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And I would entertain a motion from the Board of Abatement to close the testimony. I move that we close the testimony for this board hearing for Carol. And is there a second? Second. Thank you. Who seconded? I just couldn't see you. Jan. Jan Vick. Yeah. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Thank We've you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will deliberate and we will be in touch. And thank you. Good to hear Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Put the meeting on a back off report. Okay, hold on. Okay. I gotta remember where I was here. Bear with me. Hi, kids, sorry. Oh, are you sitting in the car? Yeah. Well, no, you can sit, sit downstairs if that's you can't eat. All right, now I'm driving. That's why we did it. All right, okay. So we got that back. My board stuff sorted out here. So it's Thursday at 9 30. You can hear me? Recording in progress. Okay, we are reconvening the select board meeting at 20 minutes of 8. And next on the agenda is budget workshop, treasurer's report, beginning process for FY25 municipal budget with discussion of planning and cemetery commissions. Action possible. So we only got in, did I give you guys copies? I made copies of everything. I didn't see any. Um, we only got three committees that submitted their budgets. Oh, here it is. Um, So that's a packet. It's a packet. Okay. Packet. Thank you. There you go. So only three groups submitted their budget. Um, the cemetery is asking for going for an increase to seventy five hundred. They've been sixty nine hundred, and. Um, the Planning Commission, or whatever they are now, are, um, I guess it's still the Planning Commission, 
they're asking for a placeholder of $4,450. Where were they before? Hmm? Where were they before? I, I what were they before? Um, it was more than that last year because they had some other things in there. Oh, okay. Um, let's see, I could tell, oh, I've got my computer closed now. And then the last one is the recreation budget. So I have a question. Yes. Why is the town clerk's office in the recreation budget? It's I moved it into the town because he contracts with them. Right. But it's not part of I didn't. So it's really that. not part of his budget. It's really not part of his budget. Right. No. And okay. neither is the um, the. Uh, the parcel, the, I took the brush hogging for the three mile bridge road parcel out of there. Yeah, well. there you go. That should be down too. That's yeah. down too. And I took those out. Um, it's just he contracts. And how does, that, how does that compare with his current? Um, he added in the extra, really comes down to the miscellaneous group. Um, and the other thing is the port. When we you print this out, you'll see that the porta parties he continues to put in at um, a lower the facility for the recreation field at a thousand dollars, and I think we came in over that last year. Yeah, we're um, only like eighteen hundred dollars right. or something. Right. Yeah, I think the porta parties stay out way too long. I think we could cut back the usage on that by, I mean, he just had last week the ones pulled from Romney, and I don't know when the ones from uh, Walt Kelly Field got pulled. Well, he only, he only put it in for a thousand, so maybe he's thinking the same way. Well, I think that's fine. As I always say, you know, those are placekeepers. When we get to the end, we can really yeah. take a look. I mean, I certainly don't have any problem with the with the planning commission or the or the cemetery, the recreation. I think we need to look at the other thing is there's nothing in here. I worry about those damn tennis courts, and there's nothing in here for the tennis. Well, that courts. comes under there's CIP separate, now. Yeah, there's a separate line in the capital improvement plan. That doesn't oh, go there, there anymore. You go. Okay, thank you. I've forgotten that. Thank you. Um, so, to answer your question about the planning commission, it's down without anything else. It's down twenty seven hundred and fifty dollars. But they they didn't account for any advertising, um, which there was seven hundred and fifty dollars in there for advertising last year. Yeah. And there was a two thousand dollar future grant match that yep. was in there last year that's not in there. So we're now. saving money. Good. We need um, it. But those uh, we I didn't hear from anyone else. Which... Who do we have on uh, on deck for the next meeting? For the next meeting. That's what I asked Sarah. Is it's it fire it is the fire? Okay, fire yeah. department. Uh, Eric understands. Five hours per week. Wait. Then highways the first week of December. Yeah. Yeah, and he's budgeted five hours a week. Um, I'll have to go back and see what he budgeted last year. But he's not. I think he's making more than twenty dollars an hour too. So. What's the what? Yes. What, what what's the labor for? He gets paid for the job. This is uh, Mitch. Yeah, Mitch for the rec field, yeah. What's he doing? Managing all of the mowing and contracts. He actually and does. He actually does quite a bit. Yeah, um, I'm not. Yeah, but 
He paint. I mean, he's putting in for paint to you know do different things. He painted. I think he even did the benches over. Yeah, there there's some stuff that he's year. not contracting out that he's physically doing himself. I see. We get pretty good value from Mitch. I remember in the days when we were trying to deal with all this stuff. We didn't do such a good job, by the way. <laughs> so that's all I really have for the budget right now. Okay, any other issues or items? Um, I don't think so. Uh, let's see. I, I don't know if you want me to bring it up now, but... Um, you want to talk about, about the computer? The, about the computer stuff. So based on somebody, Randy reached out originally to somebody about the cost of all of that, and he was given a name. I called that person uh, this past week and asked them um, a little bit about what they do. and You, you were know, able to get a hold of them? I was able to get hold mm -hmm. of them. Um, he has been doing IT for 25 years. He currently does it for Waterbury, uh, Coxbury, I think, and Eden. Um, he's familiar with Nemric and all of that. He's a former select board member in Waterbury, so he's in tune with municipal needs and requirements. And he, uh, he's happy to come in and talk to the board about his services and whatever. Um, and I, don't, I told him that I would bring it to the board and ask him if they want him to come in. I think we've got to explore, explore the options. Well, we're looking at... What are we looking at? Did you add up the total of all these things, Randy? Uh, this is like eighteen thousand dollars for the infrastructure, um, and then the uh, email stuff was like eleven thousand, I think, if I yes. remember right. Yeah. So we're looking at we're looking at spending thirty thousand dollars pretty quick, plus the battery backups, another two grand. Yeah. No, that's in oh, that's included that's in the, that's server, included the server. server. Um, the one thing he the said is the email piece was like pretty concerning to me, like. Even with the explanations tonight and looking over stuff, based on my conversation with um, my contact at Vermont Vanity, um, we should absolutely be shopping that piece of it. Well, you know, if, if we're going to shop, I say we shop because I don't see us doing the email with one vendor and buying a server well, this, from somebody else. He, that's that's guy, my suggestion. This guy said that he doesn't want to come in and just install a new server right. and new email and then walk away. Right. It's either he's going to service us and yeah. do the whole right. thing. No, that's what would, so, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, the, the, the struggle is what always used to happen in, uh, in my world. I'm sorry, Bridget, I'll be right with you. Um, in the insurance world is everybody would always give our proposals to everybody else and I always hated that. I said, let, let them come up with their own damn proposal and, and compare. Yeah. But to some degree, we have to, I didn't like Ruben's answer on the cloud thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to buy a server so we can have a server so we can convert to the cloud. That didn't make sense to me. But, you know, what do I know about IT? Almost nothing. But I think it's I think it's good to hear what somebody else has to say, and uh, you know we can give them in broad strokes what what uh, what Ruben is proposing, so we can compare apples to apples. But I don't think we should share Ruben's proposal. Well, you can't. You you don't have you don't have that luxury. That's a public document. If he wants to look at it, he, he, well, if he wants if he to, if he wants to find out what it is, I guess he can. I guess he can find it out. He but. asked me who we were working with, and I told him. Yeah, it's also going to yeah. be in the minutes, all of right. Urban's figures, and those minutes will be online. Yeah, but not the detail of what the not the detail of what the proposal is. So, well, I understand he can come in and ask for it, Sarah. I know. And if he I does, just... he does, and I'll think less of him because he did that. But. I'm just, I'm just telling you, I, from, a, from the point of view of somebody, I mean, Randy competes out there in the world all the time with different projects. Do you share information on other people's proposals in advance? No. Not. 
Do you work for the municipality? I do not. There you go. I'm not obligated to either. Thank you. Anyway, so I'm throwing it out there and um I'm done, kids. Well, I just think uh, you know we've been consistently having struggles there. We've talked about this for a year. Um, if we don't ever invite somebody in to have the discussion, we're always going to be complaining about the issues that we're having with the vendor that we're dealing with. Well, I found it interesting tonight that he knew why he was coming to the meeting, and yet he didn't have the proposal in front of him. He, he was kind of just piecemealing his answer until he got the proposal up in front of him. I mean, I just... That's kind of like how they've been operating. Like they don't have time for us anymore. Uh, Peter, I just wanted to follow. Yeah, go ahead, Peter. I was wondering if, with this proposal in front of you, have you felt any movement with regards to his service? No, I haven't. I mean, if he's if he's looking for business, then you'd think that he'd be a little bit more forthcoming. And if he's not, I I don't think it's a, a bad idea at all for us to no, find I other. I don't quotes. either. And I mean, the other problem is. He, he admitted that they're completely overwhelmed. I mean, he has, he has too much business, according to him, so. Well, that's, that's another thing, is that if he does have too much business and he kind of is just play acting that he wants this, but on a visceral level he doesn't, then maybe his numbers are off. The other, the other thing that I- Even though he says that they're deeply discounted. Well, the hourly rate is deeply discounted, but the hours it's gonna take are just, I think it's very worthwhile, and I think it's good for us to do our due diligence and talk to this person. I, I'd like to just add on to that and not limit it to just this person. Um, I would agree with that, Randy. You know, I think, you know, trying to engage with at least one other person here um, is, is in our best interest, is in the town's best interest, so. Yes, Sarah. So would you want me to go Back to my friends, the Vermont Business Registry put out an RFP saying that the town of Middlesex is seeking proposals for an IT provider. And you might be getting people from out of state. You might get people who say, yeah, we can absolutely do it remotely. Or you might get other people, but at least that's one way of getting this out. Because they do check that. I mean, that Vermont Business Registry is pretty active. It's going to piss off Ruben because he'll see it too. Right. But you know, in, in our meeting with Ruben, when he came and he sat with us, I don't know however long ago that was, a year ago, nine yeah, months ago. Oh, it was two years ago. Last yeah, spring, whatever, right? whatever it was. Yeah. Um, no, you know, we told them that we were at that point. So I don't feel like, you know, we're being open about our intention. So. I was just asking if we're likely to do that, and I will do that as your select board sure. assistant. The only thing I don't like about that is we're going to, I mean, we could, that doesn't mean we have to use them no. or talk to them. No, I think doesn't. recommendations, I don't know if we call other towns and find out who they're using. We did that, didn't we? We did. I did that. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. yeah. And what they say? Uh, was there anybody else? I was a lot of them used RB technologies. Right. Yeah. All right. Who does Bobby Brimblecombe use? <laughs> who? Are you making fun of me and my relationship with Bobby? <laughs> I guess that one went over my head, I guess. But oh well. I don't disagree. I mean, if we're if we're going to do this, if we're going to do this. We should talk to at least three people. And as far as I I'm mean, if we are sorry, Peter. If we are worried about what he think, what Ruben thinks, then I mean, it, somebody could suit him an email saying that you know, it was discussed and because you want to do due diligence for other people and, you know, you can tell them first well, if he's going to find out anyway. Technically, according to our purchasing policy, anything over $15, $15,000 has to be put out to bid. That's right. That's, yeah. there we that's go. the purchasing policy that FEMA thinks we, we abide by. <laughs> well, we should be following that. <laughs> but this isn't, I, I, yeah. This isn't, we're not, I just want to be clear, we're not contracting for just these projects. We want somebody to handle our IT for us. Absolutely. And, and what we're we talking need about. somebody that when we call them, they can come in and support us. And yeah. I mean, right. that's the biggest thing is we can't afford to be down. Right. Do, don't we have a contract with these guys? When does that expire? Yeah, when does our contract uh, expire? We have a, there's a clause in the existing contract to uh, 
cancel services. We've had that discussion with Ruben yep, as well. Right. Yep. Right about that. We have to give notice, I think, yep. is what I recall. Yep. It's like yep. something like 60 days notice, isn't it? It's quite uh, I thought it was 30, but it might be yeah. 60. So you tell me when you want him to come in and whatever we can, whenever we can. Fit, I mean, can fit him what, in, I'm, what I'm I'll concerned about, what I'm concerned about in this guys is we've been sitting on our hands on the server for various reasons for a year, and I know for myself and my own experience, when this equipment gets old, you're just it's just a matter of time before there's some kind of catastrophic failure, and then there's no opportunities for bids. Then you're frantically trying to get somebody in here to replace the server, and that's not the way to operate. Um, so we need to be moving on this stuff, and we definitely need to be moving on the email. The, the battery backup, if that, if that thing's seven or eight years old, it should be replaced. I, I agree with them on that. Whether $2,000 is the right price or not, I don't know. Well, I think $10,000 for 14 emails is a lot, but what do I know? Well, it isn't, it isn't. I, I will say that his hourly rate that he's, that he's offering us is in line with other hourly rates. So it's not, it's not the rate itself, it's just... Just seems like a lot of hours. Now. Yeah, absolutely. And, there's, and there were some you know, fixed fees in there that weren't based on hourly yeah. uh, rate charges um, that it's very broad. Well, let's see, what, yeah. let's see what the other folks have to say. So Sarah, I would say do it. Put it on Vermont Business yeah. Registry. Don't you think? I mean, unless. Hey, yeah, that's probably better than trying to find a third person any other way. It's easy too. I mean, the other thing, I guess, I guess before you do that, Sarah, yeah. if you can, if you can unearth when we asked the other towns who they were using. Uh, okay. Or if you can, make a couple of phone calls and see who some of them are using. Okay. Before I do the Vermont Business Registry, right? Yeah, I would. Just I because, to... just because, Maybe I would prefer somebody who has. Recognize or something. Yeah. Did you guys uh, pick a date for when you'd like this other person to come in? No, we were just talking about that. I'm going to get together with you and we'll figure out what will be the best date. I guess. I mean, it, it may be that it's more beneficial to have them come in and not sit in front of the board, but to come in and do an evaluation. And then you know then be able to put to together yes. put together some information. That's yeah. uh, that's what I think. So maybe, I do too. I did tell him how many computers we had and all, but um, okay, I'll talk to him about that then. Yeah, I would have him come in, check out what yeah. we have, and okay. Um, back on the budget stuff, the one thing I failed to mention, um, just because it's part of the budget, is uh, I got the new insurance numbers for health insurance, and that's a 12.41% increase. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, forget about inflation when you're talking about health insurance. That's the good news. So. Hey, the guy that comes and does my water filter went up 25%, so four of them sound bad. The guy who details my cars went up 40%. Jesus Christ. He said the cost of soap was going up. This I said, we're really? only there for 20 minutes. <laughs> anyway. Um, Are we set for the meeting at this point? Or? I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for Dorinda to finish I up. Uh, I think we I are. I gave you all okay. my good news. Thank you, listeners. <laughs> uh, I have the speed stuff here, but we don't need to go over them tonight. It's not like. No, we don't. I haven't had a chance to review pretty, those anyway. They're pretty fun. They're pretty fun, yeah. It's your idea of fun. It's reading over those speed things. You, well, you get I mean, yourself a lot. Well, percent over the speed limit on Center Road. 60 miles an hour. Yeah. I, I, don't, <laughs> I believe it. I don't doubt that one bit. I don't they, doubt they, it one up, bit. they had them set up down at the bottom of the hill. Oh, like, so everybody's coming off the hill and just cranking. I know. And you know why? Okay, so we are adjourning the meeting for this evening. Marjorie.